we need to remember that the first uh, codon or the initiator codon is always AUG. So the initiator anticodon will always be UAC. And uh, that's why this is called as initiator tRNA. A tRNA which has UAC from 3' prime to 5' prime is called as the initiator tRNA. So this messenger RNA interacts with the uh, smaller subunit in the presence of initiation factor in the presence of magnesium ion and then a tRNA, first tRNA which is always carrying UAC and methionine will join here. After this only the larger subunit will join. Now complete, uh, pr complete protein factory or translation initiation complex is formed. Now during this process there are initiation factors involved and I have already mentioned those factors here. Those initiation factors are I initiation factor 1, initiation factor 2, initiation factor 3 in the case of the prokaryotes and in the case of the eukaryotes various scientists have given various numbers to them. Just remember E is written here for to represent eukaryotic system. Now uh, the summary of this whole process is this. In the presence of initiation factor 3 of prokaryote or initiation factor 2 of eukaryote, smaller subunits makes a contact with the messenger RNA at the 5 prime end. And then this small then what will happen next? The this J represents as a cartoon for the tRNA. So this uh, tRNA carrying the first amino acid, the methionine will come and attach and this attachment process is controlled by initiation factor number 2 or in the case of eukaryote initiation factor number 3 and now the third step of this process is to at is the attachment of the larger subunit and this step is controlled by initiation factor number 1 of the prokaryotes and there are other factors which are involved in the case of the eukaryotes. So the first step is what? The first step is the Charging of the tRNA, before charging of the tRNA, the amino acids have to become activated with the help of ATP and with the help of the amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzyme. And then the first step is the attachment of the smaller subunit with the messenger RNA, followed by the larger subunit in the presence of the magnesium ion. So this all process requires initiation factors which are separate for prokaryotes and separate for eukaryotes. This is the summary of the initiation. Now what happened next to this? The next step is called as the elongation of the polypeptide chain. Now the process has begun. Now how to add next amino acid and how to develop bo the peptide bond between the amino acids so that this chain can continue and elongation process may proceed further. So the first thing to happen for elongation is the A site. So remember uh, this place is called as the P site where the AUG will come and attach. Now the first codon will always come and attach at the P site but remember all other codons will first attach at A site and then they will move towards the P site followed by the E site. So that's why the sequence is for initiator codon the sequence is from P to E and, from, and for all other codons the sequence is first is A then P then E. Now let's understand what exactly is this. Now the first step in the elongation can be called as a codon recognition. So now there is an A site which is formed next to the P site on the large subunit member a site is formed by, you can read here, A site is formed by only the large subunit, E site is formed by the large subunit but these two, the, uh, this site is formed by both of them. Now what will happen is A site is there which is next to the P site on the large subunit. Now this A site is formed only after complete ribosome is formed or you can say complete ribosome messenger RNA and tRNA complex. This is C. You can call this thing as ribosome, messenger RNA and tRNA. So there is a complex of three things formed. Once these, this complex of three things is formed, now A site is made available. Now A site is formed always on the large subunit. 
now this will expose the next codon on the a side now if you if you say a side is here so the next codon now will come at the a side now the second trna which which is also charged with a specific codon will occupy the a side so according to the complementary rule if it is u u u present here then the anti codon will will carry the information a a a and we all know u u u will code for phenyl allylene so second trna which carries uh, a a a which also carries methionine at its 3 prime end attached will come and sit at the a side so now what will happen next is peptide bond formation will occur now there are two trnas which are just next to each other one is at the a side the other is at the p side now they are so close to each other that they become energetically unstable and the stability can only be attained if there is breaking of this bond Uh, if there is a breaking of this bond between the trna and the amino acid and then bond formation between the two amino acid that means a breaking of this uh, glycosidic bond and second point is the attachment uh, attachment of two amino acids with the help of the peptide bond so peptide bond formation starts between both the amino acids present at the p site and the a site and the enzyme involved in this process is peptidyl transferase enzyme already talked about it on the last page that is a ribozyme made up of rna and the transfer of amino acid from the p site to a site takes place now if you consider this as the p site this one as the a site so now what will happen transfer of amino acid from p site to a site takes place that mean this one will lose the amino acid and these two will join them join each other with the peptide bond and now methionine has gone on top of the next amino acid now this trna is made free 